Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? Cool. <laughs> so we have just a couple announcements. So tomorrow, not tomorrow, next Sunday, I'm already fast forwarded to Wartburg. Next Sunday, you're going to have Bishop John Danderson, um, and you'll have communion, so that will be nice. And there is a date change for a matter of balance class, so it'll begin September 1st. And there is also a breakfast worship served by the council on September the 12th. And there will be a six session study of Romans. And this begins Thursday, September 23rd at 10 a.m. Are there any other announcements? Okay. We'll have our confession and forgiveness found on page 94. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose forgiveness, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We will now sing All Who Hunger, Gather Gladly, found on page 461.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join in the prayer of the day. Holy God, your word feeds your people with life that is eternal. Direct our choices and preserve us in your truth, that renouncing what is false and evil, we may live in you, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from Joshua 24. 1 and 2, and 14 through 18. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and summoned the elders, and summoned the elders, and the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your ancestors, Terah and his son Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. But I would not listen to long, therefore he blessed you. So I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you and also the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Girgashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword, but by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored, and towns that you had not built. And you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant. Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples to whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before, do, yeah, and the Lord drove out before us all the peoples the Amorites who lived in the land, therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. <coughs> our psalm for today is Psalm 34, verses 15 through 22. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to be is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones that one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned.
And our second reading is from Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist. Put on the breastplate of righteousness as the shoes for your feet Put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmets of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also to me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray, and I may declare it boldly. Here ends the lessons for the day. Thanks be to God. We're going to see if I can do all this here. The Holy Gospel, chapter John chapter 6, verses 56 through 69. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Here ends the reading. Are there any kids for our kid talk today? Are we all staying snuggled in our blankets? <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's fine. <clears throat>
Good morning. Good morning. I am so blessed and honored to worship with you on this beautiful August morning. This is my last Sunday with you, so it's bittersweet. I'm excited to go back to seminary and get these next three years started. <laughs> I'm excited to see my spouse that I've only seen periodically over the last three months. But I'm going to miss each of your faces and all that I have learned during these last four weeks with you. It has become one of the highlights of my week. Who knew a nearly two hour drive was gonna give you so much quiet time to reflect on all I've been doing this summer. So thank you. Okay, now on with the sermon. Let me know if any of this sounds familiar. Something goes wrong in your life and you get frustrated or upset about it. You talk to your family and friends about it. Maybe you talk to your pastor about it too. At some point, you go to God and ask for this problem to be fixed and to be fixed quickly. Maybe immediately or some time might pass, but then the problem is resolved or you receive some type of indication of how to deal with this situation. God has answered your prayer. Or what about this? You are afraid. Something has happened that makes you uneasy or fearful. You want some peace. You want comforted. You want to feel safe again. You cry out to God and God answers your prayer. Or what about, this is me, you make a mistake. You've made a bad decision. Your actions have resulted in consequences that you don't like. The fault is your own, but you still don't like what is happening. You pray for God to give you the words to say or the actions to do to correct your mistake and apologize. God answers your prayer. How often after God answers your prayer do you thank God? Is it easy for you to offer your praise to God? Does praising God embarrass you? If it does, why? Do you feel uncomfortable around people who frequently or easily praise God? Are you too dignified to spontaneously praise God? God, I need you. God, where are you? God, come to my rescue. God, I need you right now. How often are these statements found within our prayers to God? Do they often begin your prayer? Are they peppered throughout your prayer? Do they end your prayer? Are you more likely to include them in your prayer than not to? There is nothing wrong with praying to God with your needs and your concerns at the forefront of your mind. God wants to know all about us. God already knows all about us, but God wants us to be comfortable enough to bring our full selves to God in prayer. This includes our fears, our hopes, our dreams, our ponderings, our worries, our excitement, our anxiety, and our praise. God wants to hear them all. Did you hear me? God wants to hear our praise. It's not just in our sufferings that God walks alongside us, but it is in our happiness and in our seasons of blessing that God is also right there with us celebrating. We like to hear thank you when we have done something for someone. We teach our children to offer thanks and gratitude when someone does something for them. The same thing applies to us when it comes to God. God is not some magic genie that you go to asking for things and then when you get them, turn your back on the one who gave them. God is in personal relationship with us. God loves each of us deeply. God knows exactly what we need when we need it. God knows our hopes and our dreams and our fears. Because God knows our every need and because God loves us unconditionally, God gave God's only son so that whoever believes in Jesus 
shall have life everlasting. Jesus' death and resurrection resulting in our salvation is enough reason for our praise. We can definitely praise God when God answers our prayers. We can certainly praise God when God delivers us from trouble. We absolutely can praise God when God rights our wrong. We can even praise God while the trouble is still surrounding us. For the past four weeks, we have been reading portions of Psalm 34. Today is the last of those readings. I would like to read Psalm 34 in its entirety for you so you can hear how it all goes together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces, faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Psalm 34 is a prayer of thanksgiving which is another way of saying praise. It is thanksgiving for God delivering David for trouble. David has been running away from Saul who was trying to kill him so that Saul can remain king. In the context of Psalm 34, David has encountered Amibelech and is pretending to be crazy so that Amibelech will not see him as a threat and will cause him no harm. David has been running for his life literally. This psalm reflects David's praise and thanksgiving to God for saving his life. Psalm 34 reminds us that we can trust God in times of our trouble as our protector and our friend. God is trustworthy and dependable. God delivers us from our affliction. God redeems us from our troubles. For all of those reasons and more, David cannot help but to praise God. Praise is not just for times of jubilation, but it is for the middle of the storm as well. There is not a certain time for praise. We don't have to wait until God has answered the prayer to praise. We can praise before the prayer. We can praise during the prayer. We can praise after the prayer, but before it was answered. And we definitely can praise after answered prayer. 
The essence of praise is the acknowledgement of God's greatness and creates an awareness of God's greatness in others. When we praise God, it is not solely for our benefit because it uplifts our spirits and it reminds us of the goodness of the power of the God we serve. But when we praise God, it lets others know that this God we serve is real. This God we serve can do all things. This God we serve cares for all that God has created. There is no need too great or too small for God. Our praise and our thanksgiving for God answers our prayers. And it lets the light of Christ shine so brightly within us that others can't help but know the love of God. Jesus died and was resurrected once for all people. Jesus' salvation is for the righteous, which includes people who are brokenhearted, spiritually crushed, or suffering from an affliction. God's presence is experienced within the crisis. When the crisis is resolved, praise is the expression of our heart. Praise is the gratitude of our soul coming out of our mouths. Praise invites us to worship and participate in the way of the Lord. Earlier, I asked some questions about hesitancy to praise God. Praising God does not need to be some big, showy, fancy expression. I was raised Baptist. I've seen praise big and little, loud and quiet. Praise is your personal expression of gratitude to God. Praise is simply thanking God for being God. When we pray asking for something, at some point in that prayer, gratitude can flow. When we're telling someone about our troubles and we say that we're going to pray for God to work things out for us, once our prayer is answered, we need to say that God answered our prayer and we are thankful. We are quick to share our troubles and our sorrow with others. Let's be just as quick sharing our thanksgiving and gratitude. If you are quiet in your conversations with God, it is fine to be quiet in your praise of God. If you are loud and exuberant in your conversations with God, which that's prayer, by the way, conversation with God, then you should be just as loud and exuberant in your praise of God. Keep the same energy in your petitions to God and your praise of God. Let your light so shine that there is no question you are a follower of Jesus. Amen. We will now sing, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer, number 618.
please join me in the Apostles' Creed, found on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of courage, bless all leaders of your church. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, bless all who seek justice between nations and peoples. Give guidance to bridge builders, heal divisions, and inspire cooperation in times of crisis, disaster, and war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in need. Accompany all who are lonely and feeling abandoned and remind them of your abiding presence. Accompany all who are persecuted and exploited. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of change, bless our transitions. Guide all who are embarking on new stages in life, such as a new job, new school, or new community especially Harvey Buckholz, who is entering hospice at the Hendricks Nursing Home. Sustain enduring friendships and kindle new relationships and interests. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of comfort, bless all who mourn the deaths of their beloved ones. We give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us. Renew our confidence in your promise of resurrection and life in the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our the Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, number 597.
go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.